Now, as I told you earlier, um, there are some theorems, some concepts. Using these theorems and concepts, we can do the problems on remainders easily. So, in the series, we have Fermi's theorem over here. So, what does it say? If P is a prime and A is any number prime to P, right? It is not necessary that A should be any prime number. It is any number, but P and A that should be co-prime to each other. Then A raised to P minus 1 minus 1 is divisible by P. Okay. Or in other words, or uh, result of this theorem is if P is prime and A is any number, whatever, then A raised to P minus A is divisible by P. So this is actually Fermi's theorem. So what exactly it says, I just explain you over here. Listen to me carefully. A raised to P minus 1 minus 1 is divisible by P. Okay. So what I can say it is Px. Okay. Or A raised to P minus 1 is equal to px plus 1. That means if a raised to p minus 1 is divided by p, the remainder will be 1 provided p is prime. Okay, listen to me very carefully. Just note it down very carefully because uh, you cannot apply this theorem everywhere. Okay, there is a condition that this number p should be prime. Okay, so a raised to p minus 1 if it is divided by p, the remainder will be 1. Okay. So, I just give you a simple example. A can be any number. That means, suppose uh, you have 2 raised to 16. So, 2 raised to 16, if you divide by 17, then the remainder will be 1. Okay. That means, precisely 2 raised to 16 is basically 2 raised to 17 minus 1. So, you can compare. and 17 is a prime number. So, 2 raised to 16, if it is divided by 17, the remainder will be 1. Now, suppose you have very big number over here. Instead of 16, suppose you have 2 raised to 64. Okay. So, 2 raised to 64 divided by 17, what will be the remainder? So, this we can reduce this to this. So, what I can do? 2 raised to Now, as I told you, this number can be any number. Okay, this number can be any number. That means A can be any number. So, over here, 2 raised to 4, uh, that means basically it is 16. So, 16 raised to 16, if divided by 17, the remainder will be 1. Okay, so you can convert this to this. Now, suppose you have 2 raised to 65. Okay, 2 raised to 65 and you have to divide this by 17 to get the remainder. Then what you can do? You can convert this is to 2 raised to 64 into 2. Okay, now this is what? 2 raised to 64 as I told you uh, earlier, uh, it will be 2 raised to 4 raised to 16. So that will give you the remainder as 1. So th in this case, the remainder is 1 and that 1 into this 2, the overall remainder will be Okay, so if 2 raised to 65 is divided by 17, the remainder will be 2. Okay, and that is the, that is, uh, I am using Fermi's theorem over here. So, this is just one simple example for Fermi's theorem, though I will be taking difficult one, uh, ones also. But just for the explanation of this theorem, I am uh, taking these examples. And this one, if P is a prime and A is any number, whatever, then A raised to P minus A is divisible by P. That means A raised to P minus A is multiple of P. Okay, so we can write as P, uh, Px. That means A raised to P is equal to Px plus A. Now, what is the difference between these two? In this case, if you divide um, A raised to P minus 1 by uh, p, then the remainder is 1. In this case, if you divide a raised to, instead of a raised to p minus 1, over here it is a raised to p. So, if a raised to p is divided by p, the remainder will be a, not 1, but a. Okay? This is nothing but you multiply this expression by a. 
so you'll be getting this thing okay so this becomes a over here it is apx and plus a so a raised to p and apx is definitely multiple of p so you will not be getting remainder and uh, one that will be converted to a because you are multiplying both the sides with a okay so uh, if 2 raised to 17 is there and if you have to divide by 17 the remainder will be Okay, the previous case I uh, talked about 2 raised to 16 and the remainder was 1. But in this case, we have 2 raised to 17. Okay, the preci precisely it is just the same thing. Over here, the remainder will be 1. 1 into 2, the remainder is 2. Okay, so if a raised to p is divided by p, the remainder will be a. If a raised to p minus 1 divided by p, the remainder will be 1. Okay. So I hope you are clear with this, um, we'll be taking examples, but the only condition you have to uh, take care, A and P should be co-prime to each other, okay. A not necessary to be prime, but definitely it should be co-prime to P. That means you cannot take the combination of 3 and 15 precisely, right, because 3 and 15 are not co-prime to each other. 15 is not prime, but it is multiple of 3. 3 and 15 are not co-prime to each other. Okay. So when there is a prime number and the other number that is co-prime to this prime, uh, this number, then you can use Fermat's theorem. Uh, next we have Euler's concept. Uh, Euler, basically, I, I just introduced um, Euler number first of all. Uh, basically, Euler number, maybe uh, if you talk about any number x, okay. So, Euler number of x means the number of natural numbers or we can say the number of numbers, natural numbers I am talking, which are less than x and uh, co-prime to x, okay, which are less than x and co-prime to x. Suppose we talk about it, okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All these numbers are less than 8. But all these are not, uh, they will not be counted as a Euler number because the number should be co-prime to 8. Okay, so I delete 2, I delete 4, I delete 6. So Euler number of 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, Euler number is that is number of natural numbers which are less than 8 and co-prime to 8. So there are 4 numbers which are less than 8 and they are co-prime to 8. Okay, so Euler number of 8 is 4. Similarly, if we talk about Euler number of 6, so then we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, out of these 2, 3, 4. These three are not co-prime to 6. So we are left with 1 and 5. Okay. So Euler number of 6 is 2. So Euler gives us a formula by, by which we can calculate uh, Euler number very easily. Because see, if I talk about 6 and 8, these are really small numbers. We can easily calculate their Euler number manually. But suppose if they are big number, obviously if we talking about, if we talk about competitive exams, so nobody is going to ask 8 and 6, something like this, right? So if we have big numbers, then it will be really difficult for us to find out the Euler number. So Euler gives us a formula so that I just discuss over here. So, if at all we have to find out the Euler number of any number, uh, maybe suppose Euler number of n, okay. So, Euler number of n is equal to n into 1 minus 1 upon a, 1 minus 1 upon b and 1 minus 1 upon c and so on, right. Where a, b, c or maybe there are more number, they are uh, prime factors of n, okay, a, b, c are, I just write, different prime factors of n, 
okay so suppose we have to find out the Euler number of 8 now prime factor of 8 will be 2 cube so prime factor is 2 right 2 cube we will not consider cube but prime factor is 2 okay so I just write 8 1 minus 1 upon 2 so that is 8 into 1 by 2 that is 4 so Euler number of 8 is 4 that means there are 4 numbers below 8 uh, which are lesser than 8 and they are co prime to 8 and that we have already calculated manually right so I just verified this formula and uh, similarly we can even go for uh, 6 also so Euler number of 6 is 6 into uh, basically 6 is 2 into 3 so there are two fac uh, factors so 1 minus 1 upon 2 and 1 minus 1 upon 3 so it is 6 into 1 by 2 into 2 by 3 so it's 2 so Euler number of 6 is 2 that means uh, there are two numbers which are co prime to 6 and they are smaller than 6 okay Similarly, we can calculate the Euler number maybe for uh, 25. So 25 is a uh, uh, factor is 5. So 25 into 1 minus 1 by 5. So 25 into 4 by 5. So it is 20. So there are 20 numbers which are less than 25 and they are co prime to 25. You can even uh, go for the manual calculation from 1 to 24. You have 24 numbers out of these 5, 10, 15 and 20. These 4 numbers are not co prime to 25, right? So out of 24, if we deduct these 4, so we'll be getting 20. So Euler number of 25 is 20. So sometimes even if you are asked how many numbers uh, uh, which are smaller than this particular numbers are co prime uh, uh, means uh, uh, to this number okay so precisely you have to find out Euler number I means suppose you are asked uh, how many numbers are there which are smaller than 20 and they are co prime to 20 okay how many numbers are there which are smaller than 20 and they are co prime to 20 so what you can do you can find out the Euler number of 20 so 20 is uh, 4 into 5 so we have 2 and 5 as factors so 20 into 1 minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 and uh, 1 minus 1 by 5 is 4 by 5 so there are 8 so uh, there are 8 numbers which are smaller than 20 and they are co prime to 20 okay even uh, you wish you can go for the manual calculation so this is Euler number Euler concept okay so we will be using Euler concept and we'll be using Fermat's theorem to find out the remainders in some cases when they are uh, when but they are, uh, in some questions uh, what happens uh, they are they take lot of time if you use binomial theorem only so sometimes one or sometimes two or sometimes we need to use the uh, more than two concepts all the three concepts to find out the remainders okay so I'll be taking some examples over here and uh, if you practice well with uh, these concepts these theorems these methods then you can do all the problems based on remainders very easily okay now how Euler number is uh, useful to find out the remainders okay so for that uh, just note down the concept the application so when we have any number maybe maybe any number that is a if a raised to e n right div is divided by n the remainder will be okay or what is en over here that is Euler number of n and n and a uh, should be co prime to each other
and if at all you multiply this number by any any other number any other integer still the remainder will be 1 only right a raised to en if you multiply this by maybe any number any integer that is suppose x then also the remainder will be 1 so I just give you some examples uh, where we will be using this application uh, one more thing see Euler number of uh, as I told you Euler number is the number number of numbers which are co prime to a number and less less than that a particular number right so we calculated the Euler number of 8 6 20 15 25 right so Euler number of any prime number any prime number Euler number of any prime number will be what suppose we talk about a prime number say 7 so Euler number of 7 will be what that is 6 because all numbers which are smaller than 7 are co prime to 7 right 1 2 3 4 5 6 if we talk about Euler number of say 11 then it will be 10 okay so Euler number of any prime number is nothing but one less than the number okay Euler number of 13 will be 12 Euler number of say 17 will be 16 okay Euler number of uh, 19 will be 18 right I just take a very simple example of this concept say I have 5 raised to 16 okay 17 uh, Euler number of 17 is 16 so if 5 raised to 16 is divided by 17 the remainder will be 1 okay and that we have already verified using Fermi's theorem right Fermi's theorem I hope you uh, you are able to recall the Fermi's theorem 5 raised to 17 minus 1 divided by 17 the remainder will be 1 okay so that was Fermi's theorem I hope you are able to recall that so and this is this I have done using Euler's concept now suppose I have a question 17 raised to 40 divided by 15 what is the remainder right now 17 and 15 they are co prime to each other so 17 uh, what is the Euler number for 15 15 um, factors are 5 and 3 so Euler number will be 15 into 1 minus 1 by 3 that is 2 by 3 and 1 minus 1 by 5 that is 4 by 5 okay so that's 8 that means 17 raised to 8 if it is divided by 15 the remainder will be 1 okay so this is basically this okay so if 17 raised to 8 divided by 15 the remainder is 1 so 1 raised to 5 further the remainder will be 1 okay so in this case the answer is 1 so using Euler's concept we solve this problem very easily you can even verify using binomial theorem it's just one step process uh, just for your concept uh, conceptual clarity otherwise no need to use both the concepts so it is first then the first step 2 raised to 40 that is 16 raised to 10 right 2 raised to 4 and uh, into 10 so 16 raised to 10 that is 1 raised to 10 that is 1 if I divide by 15 so remainder will be 1 so verified using binomial theorem okay so both the concept should be clear Fermi's theorem Euler's theorem binomial theorem we discussed the three things not two not both not three uh, in fact three things so now we'll be taking the questions using one or two uh, which require one or two concepts okay